How reliable are our modern Bibles? Well, I'm going to do this in two parts because uh, the way we got our Old Testament, our New Testament uh, varies. And so right now I want to talk about how we got our Old Testament. And Christians believe that the original manuscripts of the scriptures in both the Old and the New Testaments are inspired by God. In other words, it's not, it wasn't the, the humans that developed this by their own inspiration, but it literally was God breathed and they wrote with the superintending of the Holy Spirit. In other words, there's nothing in our Bibles that has come from man as the starting point, but from God as the starting point. And yet God used the personalities, the circumstances, written on three continents over 1,500 years by 40 authors, all inspired by God. So let's talk about the Old Testament right now. First of all, there's bad news and there's good news. And the bad news is we don't have any of the original manuscripts. We don't have any of the original manuscripts for the Old Testament or the New Testament. But what we have are copies of copies of copies. And the reason for that is that it's very difficult uh, to maintain with what they had to write on, animal skins, papyrus, and so forth. Those things decay and they also become unreadable. They rip, they tear, and with much use, uh, they don't last. So what we had is we had oral tradition originally where things were passed on orally, then they were written, and then those things that were written decayed or uh, ended up being destroyed uh, for various reasons. So that's the bad news is we don't have any of the originals. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, the earliest writings that we had were, were destroyed because when they were worn out, they were ceremoniously uh, buried. And of course, those wouldn't last with the, 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 the elements of weather and so forth where these things would have been uh, either decay or destroyed over time. Now that's the bad news. The good news is with at least with the Old Testament, we'll focus on the Old Testament evidence, is that all of the ancient manuscripts we have, whether they come from Syria or Palestine or Egypt or elsewhere, all of the old manuscripts that we have uh, agree with each other in over 90% of the content. When they don't agree, it's usually a spelling, it's, um, it's a, a, a grammatical error sometimes. There's different errors, but it doesn't change any aspect of biblical doctrine. Uh, a second thing that's encouraging is that the Greek Old Testament uh, translation that we have, which comes from the second and third, uh, second and third time period before Christ, second or third century before Christ, that the translation of that of the Hebrew into Greek, because it was the common language of the day, agrees with all the oldest. Hebrew manuscripts that we have that are dated after that. So again, over 90% of the content agrees with the Septuagint, which is the time before Christ. And so all the Jews accepted that which was inspired by God from the Old Testament documents. A third thing that's encouraging is, and this was one of the greatest finds in archaeological history, is the discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls in 1947. We'll probably do a separate tough question on the Dead Sea Scrolls because uh, of the great impact that the Dead Sea Scrolls have had on manuscripts. Uh, but the Dead Sea Scrolls, what happened there is we were able to compare the earliest then manuscripts that we had of the Hebrew, which were about the 10th century AD, were the oldest manuscripts we had at the time, to manuscripts that were written 100 years before Christ. So 100 years before Christ, uh, first and second century BC. And what we'd find in those is that the Dead Sea Scrolls, which contain, for instance, they contains all the Old Testament books with the exception of Esther. And for instance, Isaiah, the copies found of Isaiah, there's two complete copies of Isaiah that were found, and they contain 95% exact wording of the existing manuscripts that were dated 1,000 to 1,100 years later. So this is an amazing discovery, which shows the incredible accuracy of the copies of the copies of the copies. And one way to think about this is if 
We have the Declaration of Independence, for instance, and there's a lot of things that go into preserving that. As a matter of fact, a lot of people don't realize how much money goes into the special casing for that. It goes underneath the ground at night. It has special uh, types of solutions uh, on it that preserve it. And so we have the original Declaration of Independence. But if we lost it, if if that if if where that's kept was blown up and we lost the declaration of independence we would be certain that because of the copies that we have of the declaration of independence we're certain of what the original said because we compare all the copies together and the earlier we go back to when the declaration of independence was written we're able to see where uh, misspellings or miscopies happen. And that's the same thing with the copies we have of the Old Testament. A fourth thing that is good news with reference to our Old Testament is Jewish traditions laid out every single aspect for copying. There were people, there were scribes called the Masoretes that so preserved the copies that uh, they had all these laws that they had to adhere to. They would count the amount of words in the copies. If there was one mistake that they made on a page, they would throw it away. Every time they wrote the word of God, they would have a ceremony before they would write the word of God. Um, and, and if there was a mistake made, they would destroy, bury the copy. So the copyists, the scribes who preserved the Old Testament writings were meticulous about it. And we have all these copies in, ex in existence today, extant copies that are very old, very ancient. Again, the oldest being the Dead Sea Scrolls of the Old Testament from before Christ. And they all agree in approximately 95% of all the wording that is written. And again, the, the differences in the words oftentimes are very minor. It's a misspelling, it's a transposition, it's putting one word before the other and so forth. But we can tell where those mistakes were made. And then lastly, a fifth reason to, to think that, we, that our Old Testaments are reliable and I think the most important is Jesus himself. And just quickly, Jesus confirmed, for instance, People like Moses, Daniel, Isaiah, these are people that liberal scholars say didn't write what they wrote, and yet Jesus attributes their writings to these very people. He says this, in, for instance, in Matthew 24, 15. Jesus taught about the authority of the Old Testament when Satan appeared before him in the wilderness. Three times, Jesus says, it is written and he's referring to the Old Testament writings and he quotes from the book of De Deuteronomy with the authority that God has spoken in order to dispel the wiles of Satan. Um, Jesus talks about creation and refers to the Old Testament. He talks about Adam and Eve in Matthew 19. He talks about Sodom and Gomorrah and its destruction in Luke 10, 12. He talks about Jonah. One of the people, that, this is somebody that most liberal scholars mock. Come on, Jonah eaten by a whale or a great fish. And yet Jesus says that is the type, that is the picture of his own resurrection. Uh, Jesus talks about the inspiration of the Holy Spirit when he refers to David said in the Holy Spirit so that David was inspired by God in Psalm 110, and he refers to this in Matthew 26. He says that all the scriptures, all the Old Testament, are being fulfilled in his hearing. When Jesus is talking, he's saying he's fulfilling the Old Testament. So he's talking about its prophetic accuracy. He said that he didn't come to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. He talks about the unity of the Bible. He says that it's written about me in Luke 24 and 27 and 44, all the different divisions of the Old Testament, the law, the prophets, the writings, he says, refer to him. So Jesus says that the Old Testament's about him. He says in John 17 about his disciples, about all his followers and would-be followers like you and me, sanctify them by the truth. And then he says, your word, referring to the Old Testament, is truth. 
In other words, there's no error. He's talking about the infallibility of the Old Testament. He says, to whom the word of God came, the scriptures cannot be broken. And then lastly, he talks about the indestructibility of the Old Testament. He said, it's easier for heaven and earth to pass away than for one letter of the law to fail. So Jesus didn't have any qualms. He didn't correct anything. So what we had passed on from the Septuagint, which the Dead Sea Scrolls verified before that, Jesus said that everything that the Jews were following at the time, the Old Testaments that we have even now, are without error and completely reliable. <music>